If you look at their numbers so far this season, they're actually better than that year when they had an undefeated regular season. Now, in case you forgot, that was the year Spygate allegations were swirling. We all know by now the Patriots are even better when their back is against the wall. It appears... They don't just want to win, but win big. With Deflategate in their hindsight, sort of, it looks like something special could potentially happen yet again. It's New England versus everybody. Skip, what are the chances this Patriots team goes 16-0? Molly, Stephen A., I, I don't want to jinx my Patriots by saying they're going to go 16-0. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's extremely likely. It's extremely probable they will go 16-0 because the great Tom Brady is on an 07-like mission to show the NFL what he thinks of deflate gate. Deflate this, this. He's going to deflate every opponent in a row. He's taking it out. He's going psycho Tom on foe after foe after foe. The other day I was talking to the, the great Jay Feely, a close friend of Tom Brady's, and he said, I'll clean it up a little bit. A ticked off Tom Brady is a thing of beauty. I like that line a lot because it is. It's a thing of beauty, except for those people who have to try to stop him. And a lot of teams are going to have a big problem stopping Tom Brady, including one game on a Sunday night at Indy, October 18th. That's going to be, in Brady's eyes, the Dirty Rats game. You know, the people who whistle, the whistleblower game for Tom Brady. Do you really think the Colts are going to stop the Patriots that night, even in Indianapolis? I do not think so. I think he will really take it out on Andrew Luck and company that night for turning them in that night. Obviously, AFC Championship game in Foxborough, which started Deflate Gate. Then they do have a tricky game against Peyton Manning at Denver. Maybe Peyton's a little, so to speak, ticked off because of what got divulged when all the, the text messages came out, the emails came out, that Tom Brady took a little shot, a competitive shot at Peyton. Maybe he will rise to that occasion. I don't think so. Even though he's got a defense to back him up this year, Peyton does in Denver. I think that the Patriots might be a slight favorite in that game. It'd be close, but maybe slight favorites. That's a dicey game, but I would give that to New England. And then finally, December 27th, second to the last game, versus the arch-rival Jets at Jets. That'll be a tough one. It could come down to that. They could be 14-0 at that point. Would you give that to Todd Bowles and Darrell Rivas? I don't know. Not after what we saw, obviously, last Sunday, but I think that'll be a dicey game. So I'm going to say at Denver, at Jets, two possibly losable games but not likely. So can I envision 16-0 with Tom Brady at the helm driving this, this bus? You better believe I can. I can't. I think that the, the New England Patriots will definitely lose one, likely go 14-2, and two, possibly go 13-3. and three. They will not go undefeated because the one that I am absolutely booking, obviously considering all things being equal, meaning everyone being healthy and just looking at the personnel that both teams have and how they're playing, I believe that the Denver Broncos will beat New England in Denver. That's the one that mm. I'm not wavering on one bit. The Patriots will lose to the Denver Broncos so long as all the bodies remain intact and everybody remains healthy. OK, the other two possibilities, I don't consider the Bills to be one of them. I think on the road in New England, I don't believe that the Bills will be able to do it. I think that the Jets have a shot. They'll get annihilated at MetLife State. I mean, in New England. But I think at MetLife Stadium on December 27th, I believe the Jets have a chance at winning that game. Yeah. And I do believe that. The other game that I'm going to look at is I think the Giants have a chance of beating the Patriots on November 15th. I, if I'm surprised you didn't bring that up right away. I, that's the one I circled for you. Right. I thought you'd go right it's, to it's, that it's, game. It's, it's, I, I, I think that the Giants on November 15th, assuming Victor Cruz is back by then, with Odell Beckham Jr. and Ruben Randall, with a guy like Shane Vereen, who has some degree of familiarity, even though we know Bill Belichick's a genius and he knows how to switch things up, yeah. I think Shane Vereen will be uh, familiar with them to some degree. 
and will be Could able be. to school them on at least a few things that the New England Patriots may do that afternoon. I expect that to be a high-scoring contest, but I think the Giants will make just enough plays. I'm still reserving the right to pick that game. I don't know. It depends on what I see from the Giants in the coming weeks. But right now, I would say to you, it's a possibility that New England is going to lose two or, or, two, two, two or three of those games. Denver at the Jets and at the Giants. I don't think they'll lose two games at MetLife Stadium, but I definitely believe they'll lose one. You know, now that you so remind me, is it, it, is, two. it is possible more likely 14 and two. that mm -hmm. Eli Manning would just close his eyes in the last few seconds and just throw it as far as he could, and it would stick in somebody's face mask, that, and it would change the game. Maybe that would set up the winning field goal. So that's possible. Well, you're the one, you're or the is one his that name the, Eli you're, Locke? You're the, you're we should one, change his last name to Locke. No, we shouldn't. No? How, how many rings does he have? You're the uh, one. Oh, yeah. Two lucky how, rings. How many do you got? Uh, two. Yeah, Tony? Oh, yeah. I can't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one that sits up there and, and, and laments Super Bowl championships based on luck. Mm -hmm. We don't care. We'll take it any way that well, we can get Well, that's the only it. way you're going to get you it Which you are Tom with Brady. your teams as well. Yeah. Damn Whatever. right. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't winning Super Bowl this year. Mm. All right. Stephen A. says the Patriots will go 14-2. and two. To Seattle. Skip says highly likely they'll go 16-0, and oh, and I will keep mine to myself so I don't jinx anybody. Thank you. So. Completed his 12th career fourth quarter overtime comeback Sunday, mostly due to the fact that he had time to throw. Now stay with me here. Luck was pressured on 13 of his 22 dropbacks in the first three quarters, including his second interception, but was pressured on just two of his 14 fourth quarter dropbacks. So Luck now has 30 turnovers since the start of the 2014 season, the most in the NFL during that span. Stephen A., are you still as, as high on Luck? In all fairness and in all honesty, Skip, no, I am not. I still believe that he's a fantastic young quarterback who's got a tremendous amount of promise, um, and I love his guts. In the fourth quarter alone, what are the numbers here? 11 for 13, 144 yards, two touchdowns inside of 59 seconds, thanks to Dwight Lowry's second interception of the game. Um, he showed up when it counted most, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. But these turnovers that he continues to make put Indianapolis in a hole. Now, I've been on the record saying on many, many occasions, they need to help him out. They need to protect him better. They need to get guys out of his face. They need to put him in a position uh, where he can stand back there and throw the football like other quarterbacks have the luxury of doing. And by and large, a lot of the mistakes that he's made being sacked a hundred times in his first three years in the NFL, although it dissipated over the final over the last two years, is still entirely too many. The amount of hits, uh, he's gotten hit more than any quarterback in the NFL. We get all of that. But knowing this, he still runs out of the pocket, and it ain't just interceptions. He's fumbling the ball when he gets hit. He's scrambling, and he's not protecting the ball the way that he should. And it seemed over the course of a couple of games this season to have become more of a mental issue as anything else. Sort of praying, Skip, that you don't make those mistakes rather than just playing. The first three years that he played in the NFL, I just saw a guy trying to overcompensate and make things happen, leading his team to three consecutive 11-5 and five seasons and advancements in the postseason each year. What I've seen this year thus far, with the exception of that fourth quarter on Sunday against Tennessee, I saw a guy that seems mentally warped, literally afraid of the next mistake he's going to make. Wow. I don't see the same Andrew Luck mentally, and he's going to have to overcome that. He's young. It's no reason to panic or anything like that. I'm just acknowledging that for the first time, I'm seeing things that I did not see before. And that has to change if he's going to be the quarterback I and many others profess to you that he is going to be. So you're conceding a little bit that I wasn't just being a hater when I called it a premature coronation of Andrew Luck, the turnover machine that he has been for the past really four years. Well, I wouldn't go that far because I just said to you that the things that I'm seeing now, I didn't see before. I thought when you were saying that before, you were seeing things you wanted to see. I think right now, Andrew Luck 
has 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 made you a prophet because now the things that you were swearing about, which to, to me did not exist before, suddenly have come into existence, and I think they're relevant now. Okay, but he did have the second most turnovers in all of pro football to Mark Sanchez when Luck was a rookie. And then that continued in the last year yeah, when he, he had didn't. the second most turnovers to Jay Cutler, your favorite quarterback. So I'm just I, reacting I to what I see. I still didn't care about any of that. Okay. I didn't care about that. I care about it now because he's got Moncrief with T.Y. Hilton with Fleena and those boys, and he's got Frank Gore. He didn't have that before. There's no excuse for him doing it now. He was overcompensating in the past. Now he's just messing up. Okay, but he has been held upright a little bit by the fact that he's played in the AFC South. And they are, he's 17-2 and two against the AFC South. So that's been his buoy so far in pro football, right? Yep. Okay. Buoy, I like that name. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty smooth. <laughs> All right, up next we stay in the smooth. AFC, guys. Steve Smith Sr. says the Ravens' D needs to step their game up. How is his team going to react? And these two, we'll get into that coming up.